Florida meeting in December of uh, Central Arkansas Astronomical Society. My name's Chris Toady, and I'm uh, stepping in for Daryl tonight. And uh, just want to thank you all for coming out and for everybody that's on Zoom tonight. And um, I want to know if there's any new members that have recently joined. Uh, Okay. Are there any new members here uh, that would like to introduce themselves, please? That I, that would be awesome, sir. Yeah. My name is Stephen Oakland, South Louisiana. I live in Central Arkansas. Getting to love for astronomy, man. I saw the first planet. I saw a few planets the other day, and I had my house. I was like, yeah, you know what? I've been wanting to do this. It's a lot to learn, man. Getting old. Yeah, so. yeah Roger that. Well, glad to Welcome. We're glad you're here. Yes, sir. It's a good start, and you'll go even further with this group that's here, sir. We're glad you're here. Anybody else? All right. Um, moving right along. Um, well, is there any old members that, that would like to reintroduce themselves? Well, older people. All right. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, is anybody working on any projects they want to tell us about before we get into things here? Of course, I know Carl and Darcy have, have the eternal project in, until the eclipse. And if y'all have any updates y'all want to tell us about. That's a lot. 31 presentations. Awesome. And you only have what? 2000 more to do. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. All right. Any other things we need to cover? Okay. Well, Bruce, uh, as far as I know, I think you're the only speaker tonight. And, uh, if you would like to come up, and uh, I guess I'll introduce you as Bruce McNath. Uh, he, he, he helps out a lot around here, and he is a, a great speaker. And uh, why don't you come on up, and I'll, let, I'll turn everything over to you, sir. So... Uh... I want to brag on our uh, dark sky festival. That's, that's what I'm doing tonight. All right. Uh, an awful lot of our club members were involved. We had, uh, what? Not seeing me on the zoom. How do I do that with this screen occupied? Oh yeah. Uh, where is the zoom? I'll let you do it. Oh, not recognizing you. Here it is, right down here. I got it. This one. So I got it. All right, now I need to get back to my, uh, where do I do that? I'm not familiar with this program. Okay.
I'm going to, have to go up here to view. All right. Well, that looks nice. Yeah. Move this out of the way. All right. So um, we've uh, we first tried to have something like this. I don't know that we were uh, ambitious uh, the first year we tried to do this, and I was trying to think today exactly when that was, but I, the COVID has uh, fouled up my uh, my uh, memory of uh, not that not not that I had the COVID, but the the whole process has been so discombobulating. I'm not sure when, but it was a few years ago we attempted to have a dark sky event. Uh, just outside Jasper, and we clouded out. Uh, Ken, uh, you and I and, and somebody else camped out. And, Rocky. Yeah, Rocky. We had a little, uh, we had a little uh, mini star party where we were camped out the night before, but it uh, clouded out the Friday and Saturday night of the actual event. Uh, and we did have programming in the library at Jasper, and we had some more in in Harrison, but it was basically a blowout because of the clouds. And, and, uh, then we were going to have a big one in Gilbert and the COVID we had to cancel because of COVID that was last year. So this was our first, uh, year. And, and of course with all that, uh, even though that we, we had to cancel, we'd done a lot of planning. So by the time we got around to, uh, this year's event, uh, we had put together quite, uh, quite a, uh, a program now if i can get the slides to move how do i get the slides to move what yeah that's okay there it goes wasn't working so uh i've just, probably everybody here knows about ansa but ansa was the host uh, of this, uh, event, the Arkansas natural sky association, uh, which is, uh, our state's affiliate of the international dark sky association. So, uh, ANSA is not an astronomy club like CAS. It's a, an environmental group focused on the nocturnal environment. Uh, and, uh, when I've talked about trying to put these events together, it's ANSA that, um, that I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> Now, uh, the mission of ANSA uh, and, uh, I, for that matter, IDA uh, and the festival are the same, and that is to educate people about the consequences of the careless use of artificial light at night. Uh, and, you know, this all got started, IDA got started uh, from totally from an environment, uh, from a, um, an astronomy perspective. Uh, a night sky uh, light pollution perspective, but <laughs> it's turned out that this light pollution is a lot more significant than not seeing the stars. Um, and again, I assume most people uh, listening to this are aware of all this, but it turns out that um, uh, perhaps not surprisingly that everything that lives on the surface of this planet has evolved under the cycle of night and day the diurnal cycle. Uh, and this is not just a behavioral thing. This is a biological, uh, rooted, um, uh, uh, phenomenon. And we have, uh, as, as humans, we have sensors in our eyes. They're not there for seeing they're there strictly to inform our minds and our bodies as to whether it's night or day. Uh, and they trigger those, um, the, the presence or absence of sunlight triggers a metabolic um, uh, alteration in our physiology, kicks on different hormones that drive different aspects of our, of our, um, of our um, uh, bodily functions. And this is true for humans, and it's true all the way down to the smallest little uh, 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 creatures that, uh, that live on the surface of the plant phytoplankton and, 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 um, and, uh, um, uh, zooplankton, for example, the simple little organisms that live in a water column, the zooplankton, uh, sink in the column during the day, rise in the column at night, and feed on the phytoplankton in the presence of light pollution. That doesn't happen. They don't feed on the phytoplankton. You end up with algae blooms. Uh, that's just one little tiny example 
Uh, I talked about those sensors in the human eye. Uh, uh, insects have them on the tops of their head to detect the presence of light and day. And about every other week now, there's a, seems like another article comes out um, uh, uh, on the biological impacts of, uh, of artificial light at night on um, various organisms. And Germany is the first, by the way, the first country to pass national laws addressing uh, concerns with uh, light pollution, artificial light at night. Uh, and the concern there is that a, a, a drop in biomass, by which they mean insect population, uh, is, uh, is declining, been declining for years. Uh, and that now is believed to be significantly tied to the, uh, to the light pollution phenomenon. Uh, because it, what it does is it confuses the insects. They, they have their biology with whether they feed in the day or they don't feed it in the, at night or, uh, uh, and, um, when they mate, when they migrate and so forth and so on. And the, uh, light, uh, confuses them, interrupts their, um, their feeding process or their breeding process. Um, there's, um, also the phenomena of, um, of, uh, of, photo taxes. Uh, we've all seen that particularly with an outdoor light with attracts the moths and they'll just fly themselves to death. I was up at uh, Mount magazine talking to them about becoming an international Sky park and, uh, was struck by the, uh, by the, the string of walking sticks that had, uh, were attracted to a door, a light by a door in the, uh, in the, uh, uh lodge there. And there was literally dozens of these walking sticks that were just dead there. Some of them had made it all the way up to the light, <laughs> but most of them were just in a line all, all down, uh, along the, uh, the walkway there had been attracted by that light and were mesmerized by it and stayed there until they just died. Um, anyway, I spent more time talking about that than I intended to, but, um, uh, uh, this, uh, this slide here depicts the original concern being light pollution. And you see that uh, graphic going there. That's basically um, uh, showing how this has progressed. It's come out of nowhere in terms of human history. Uh, this phenomena of light pollution is a very recent uh, 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 problem. This uh, little graphic starts in 1950 and then it projects at the current rate on into 2025. Uh, and, uh, 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 it, and the, the level of light pollution is still increasing at about a 2% per annum rate. And so you can see uh, what's happening here. There is no place in Arkansas that is naturally dark anymore, including the Ozark and Ouachita National Forest. So, uh, in addition to the uh, health impacts, the American Medical Association, by the way, uh, tells us that uh, ex uh, uh, exposure to artificial light at night increases our uh, uh, risk of uh, uh, diabetes, obesity, depression, and increased risk of, uh, of breast and prostate cancer. All of these, of course, uh, are in, uh, diseases of modernity. Uh, and then there's the uh, issue of uh, energy waste and, and, um, and carbon, uh, greenhouse gas, carbon uh, emissions, because a significant portion of, the, of our country's uh, carbon uh, footprint comes from the uh, wasteful use of uh, outdoor lighting at night. So I'm not going to get into much in the, into the, the uh, principles of responsible lighting. You can get that on the internet, but the point of the festival is to get people out under a nearly naturally dark sky and get their attention with that. And while you've got them there, educate them about the consequences of uh, light pollution and what we can do to mitigate uh, the problem. It's, IDA is not against artificial light at night. It's against the unnecessary and irresponsible use of it. And so the little graphic on the left symbolizes the bait here to get people to this festival to come out and see 
something probably many of them have never seen. Uh, I think it's estimated that 90% of the young people in the country today grow up and reach adulthood have never witnessed the Milky Way. Uh, that is a, that's a social and cultural problem. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a matter of situational awareness, uh, not to recognize, not to have ever experienced, uh, uh nature at night and particularly the galaxy. That we are part of. And the little graphic on the right, uh, is just, uh, uh, uh there to symbolize, uh, the concepts that, uh, that surround responsible lighting, which boils down to putting the light where you need it, uh, only light when you need it, where you need it, and the amount you need in the right color. The right color means little, as little blue light as possible because that's the light that is biologically active. It also is the one that scatters in the atmosphere most easily and creates to, uh, contributes to sky glow. So I threw this picture in there because it sort of <laughs> it sort of symbolized to me the uh, the uh, the uh, project. That's the back of my my little Prius with the front with the back seats folded down. Uh, uh, I had uh, used up every cubic inch to get the gear in there that uh, uh, to take up the, to this festival. But we have we have endeavored to cram as much stuff into the festival as we could. So this is a metaphor. Uh, and this shows, uh, how successful we were, um, whoops, there, we had 23 partners who participated in one way or another. I sure would like to get rid of that. If I can, there we are, if I can get that down out of the way. Anyway, well, so we had the Memphis Astronomical Society, obviously CAS, and the Sugar Creek Astronomical Society. We had the Arkansas Outdoor Photography Club, Northwest Arkansas Space. Uh, participants can now see your screen. Well, I hope so. Uh, Explorer Scientific, North Central Arkansas Master Naturalist, Audubon Society, the Buffalo River Partners, Arkansas Audubon. Just going down the list, we had 23 partners, all uh, either uh, local community organizations, including the Searcy County Chamber of Commerce, uh, or uh, environmental groups, or astronomy groups, basically, is what rounded that out. Now the slide won't move again. There we go. So um, <clears throat> this picture John Reed took, it's not one of his best <laughs> and doesn't quite do justice. Uh, you've got the winter end of the Milky Way coming up there. But uh, Wednesday night, I had rented a cabin. And so Wednesday night we had a, and this was a last minute deal. We had a volunteers only. A party on Wednesday night, uh, had dinner and a few guys, Rocky Togney and John and some others got out and set up telescope. And you can just make out the Milky Way there. It's up on a hilltop. It's a great spot, dark sky. Um, why this thing won't. So as I indicated, uh, we had a lot of partners as a last minute, we hadn't planned this. We thought, Oh, let's try to get a picture. So we didn't, a lot of our volunteers weren't there. So this is about maybe a little over half of, uh, of the, uh, of the volunteers involved in the event. And you can see a lot of guys here and gals from Cass, uh, in this picture and, uh, Sugar Creek and, uh, and uh, the Northwest Arkansas Astronomical Society uh, were represented in this picture. And then a lot of people from the Master Naturalists, North Central Arkansas Master Naturalists were big volunteers. 
So we, we did this at the, uh, Tyler Bend, uh, 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 campground on the Buffalo national river, which is an international dark sky park. We got it designated that way. in, in uh, uh, what 2019, I guess it was. Uh, and this just, uh, was the layout of the, of the facility, uh, where we were going to put the telescopes and, and where we were going to have art and science, uh, 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 uh platform and, uh, EAA and bubbles and rockets and solar systems, uh, uh, miniature solar system, uh, solar eclipse table that, that uh, Carl and Darcy manned, of course. And then the, the local chamber also had a, they're, they're, uh, promoting this, the eclipse because it will pass through, uh, that part of the state there in Searcy County. So they had a, their own table about the eclipse, uh, Daryl manned a meteorite table, uh, library telescopes, uh, Buffalo river foundation had a table, Audubon had a table, uh, and so forth. And we had a responsible lighting table. This is how we had, we had over 20 telescopes on the field. Uh, and, uh, this is just how we mapped them out, uh, laid them out there. Um, and so it was an experience and I'm, this is, a uh, uh, we call the Collier Homestead. It's there at the, uh, Tyler Bend, uh, park. And you can see the Milky way there. I've covered it up with all that text. Uh, this was, I believe the last homestead issued in the country in the 1930s. And I think it's interesting that, that by the 30 years later, the government was buying it back from them <laughs> to make the park, to make the Buffalo river national park. Anyway, one of the, one of the guests wrote this and I felt it ought to be, well, I plugged that in there. I held a piece of the moon in my hand and a rock older than the planet saw the rings around Saturn and the moons around Jupiter and saw the incredible hearts of people who shared their telescopes and passion with those of us just opening our eyes and really seeing for our, uh, for our first time. Thank you to everyone who made this event. One of the highlights in my life, uh, Cass Rifkin. And so now I well, want that text there that shouldn't be there. Oh, well, sorry. I don't know how that happened. Well, I want you to see the pictures. Let me see if it'll do it now. Yeah. Well, we'll just go through there with that on there. We had this, we had to have two venues because they, they won't let you do certain things in the park. So we had that little, uh, one of the float services, uh, let us use their paddle house there up as you entered the park. That's what that first picture was. And we set people up up there so we could sell stuff, um, which we couldn't do in the park. There's Daryl with the meteorites. And everybody knows Pat. And that was the, the local, uh, clips lady. Young man's got him a moon rock. This was a real popular table. This was Northwest Arkansas space, uh, table. And they had a periodic table and they had doing, uh, earth and, and electrical and um, uh, 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 what am I trying to say when you deal with hydraulics, water hydraulics, uh, projects that the kids could fool with. That's uh Casey Johansson. She's their dark sky, uh, pre chief, the parks, chief, dark sky docent, uh, or ranger, if you will. That young man's name, Eric, he gave a picture of, gave a talk on and a workshop on, uh, night sky photography.
here we were recognizing the mayor of Gilbert, who or former mayor who got their lights, had ramrodded their lighting program, the street lighting program. We had about a little over 200 people each night. I think maybe 250 on Friday and maybe just over 200 on Saturday. We didn't do a head count, it was a rough estimate. And of course the camp fields there were full of, of uh, we filled up the park. All right, so that's my little presentation on the Dark Sky Festival. Uh, we are planning uh, a, a repeat next year, uh, probably October the 7th. So you might pencil that in on your calendar. Uh, we're, uh, you know, there's an annular eclipse that occurs on the 14th and the dark weekends that, that month are the 7th and 14th, uh, Saturday's 7th and 14th. And we decided to stay away from the eclipse in, uh, because we were afraid we were going to lose some volunteers, even though it's a partial eclipse here. Uh, some avid folks will run off to Texas to where it's an annular eclipse. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we wanted to avoid uh, crucial losses of crucial people like that. So uh, we're looking at October the 7th. Uh, we're going to meet with the park service on the on the third of January. We had a lot of problems with the park, uh, and we're hoping we can work those out because otherwise it's a good spot for this. There's a few drawbacks, things we need to address uh, administratively and otherwise. If we can't, then we may have to find another location. Uh, but uh, they've certainly got the facilities that. Uh, uh, that are suitable. So, uh, some other items to touch on here, um, that have nothing to do with the festival, a little brief update on the RRT. As most of you know, uh, uh, Arkansas tech and CAS have a joint venture with the, uh, our, what we call the RRT, the remote robotic telescope here on the, out here on the, uh, grounds. Uh, for some time, uh, and um, Daryl uh, was uh, urged uh, Cass and, and ATU to consider uh, uh, submitting a grant to upgrade that scope and so forth, and uh, with the idea of making it more suitable for exoplanet uh, observ observing, and that was done. And the grant was granted, uh, and we've got a hell of a telescope system out there. Uh, it is a jewel of an instrument, a 14 and a half inch F 6.3 Dahl Kirkham, right? Uh, Dahl Kirkham. Uh, the CCD is sort of passing away. And, uh, 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 and so we went with a CMOS camera uh, but since this is a scientific uh, program, we needed it to be a 16-bit system, and CMOS is or 12-bit. And the way they this SBIG has overcome that is they've created this very complicated camera that uh, stacks 16 images internally, which turns it into a 16-bit machine or camera. Uh, it's backlit, 93% efficient. Uh, comes with uh, how many filters? How many filters? Anyway, we, we, we've got a complete set of photometric and, and, uh, and imaging uh, filters in it. Uh, it's a huge filter wheel, three narrowband, but it'll hold the whole, the whole, any filter you can think of for sky photography, it'll hold it. Uh, it's got a, uh, a camera rotator and a, a guiding uh, system, guide star system, 
that's part of that uh, rotation system. So you can hook on to guide stars easily. And then it has a, uh, it, it has a, uh, oh, what do you call that device that uh, uh, adjusts for the, so, yeah, I never can remember it. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you say? I was guessing spectrometer, maybe. The adaptive optics. That's what it is. Oh. Uh, and oh. so this thing makes pinpoint star images. Uh, but it has been a challenge to get it up and running for several reasons. First of all, uh, after we got it here uh, and we were. Uh, taking up the issue of setting up calibration and everything, uh, we were led to believe by the manufacturer that, that you, you can't uh, do what you do with a CCD camera, where you take a set of, uh, you take a dark, you create a, a master dark for as long as the longest duration you would ever want to take an image with. And then the software will take that, that dark and adapt it to any lesser uh, exposure you might make just mathematically can't do that with CMOS. You got to match <laughs> the image with the dark. And so that was a first puzzle. So we said, well, what we'll do is we'll create a library of darks. Uh, yeah, and we created a library of darks to solve that problem. Then, uh, we realized that, wait a minute, the flats. Uh, this camera with a, with a camera rotator, sometimes it's going to be rotated one way and you cross a meridian and the camera is going to be turned another way. And so your flats, uh, we were concerned that now our flat, we're going to have to make flats. Well, we did some, Doug did some tests and it turns out that turns out not to be crucial. So we've gotten our way around that. Uh, uh, the, uh. <laughs> The, the third problem was getting our heads around this image stacking concept, uh, because a, uh, uh, the, the way we've got it rigged, the shortest exposure is one second. And if you, uh, use a stacking feature, then the shortest ex actual exposure you would actually use is 16 seconds because it stacks 16 images. And if you go less than 16 seconds, you just get fewer images stacked. It doesn't shorten the actual individual exposure until you get under one second. So it took a while to get our heads around that. And then you start thinking, well, then a 32 second exposure is really a two second exposure in terms of saturation and so forth. Um, so we, We've uh, had all those problems. We've just about worked our way mentally. A lot of it's just mental, but, uh, but some of it is using features that the software has that we, none of us had ever used before. At least I hadn't, Doug hadn't, uh, where it'll create, uh, auto darks and auto, I mean, auto flats. And so we're having to, to, to try to make this, you know, what I'm, what it boils down to is if you were just a sole user of this telescope, none of this would be a big problem. The problem is we're trying to make this available to a community of people robotically. Uh, and that's the challenge. Uh, and that you're not here and you can't make your flats here. So you got to be able to do all this kind of stuff remotely and in, 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 in an, or an automated fashion. And so we're working our way through that. And then it turns out the mount has a glitch in it. So we had to send the gearbox off to get that repaired and then uh, one of the roof sensors was acting up. So I came out here the other day to replace the roof sensors, the positions of the roof sensors, and then motor wouldn't drive the, the roof, but in one direction, it would only open, it wouldn't close it. So <laughs> we've, we've spent the last week, uh, troubleshooting that. And hopefully we got that fixed today. So, uh, you know, we've had this thing for several months and we've taken a handful of images with it, but Doug, before we sent off the gearbox to get fixed, it could actually 
the, with the guide system compensate for that gear problem to some extent. And Doug ran two exoplanet, uh, uh, projects before we, we sent it off and we have processed that data halfway processed that data. We're learning from, from, um, the experts that we've got other steps to take with it, but it looks like beautiful data. And, um, and so when we get this thing up and running, uh, it looks like it will, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be a special, a very special system. So that's the RRT update. Oh yeah. Um, well, of course, um, Stephen Caldwell and, um, uh, Matthew Hanks with the university, uh, Danny, uh, Doug and myself mostly. And John here today was out there. Yeah. Uh, getting it, uh, uh helping us get some of the electronics sorted out. We, <laughs> we had an electrical engineer, a uh, master's degree, instrumental instrumentalist engineer, uh, and, and Danny, all three of them trying to figure out why that damn roof was only going one way, but at any rate, I think we figured it out. Plus the people who made the system, we had been communicating with them, um, the roof system. So next item, uh, annual meeting, meeting Christmas holiday party. Now, a lot of you have never been to one of these, uh, it is, we, we hold, we, for a number of years, we've, we've held them at my house, 822 Beachwood. It'll start at 6 PM. It's a potluck. So cook something up and come. It's a BYOB. Uh, we have a brief business meeting, usually brief, um, to elect, uh, officers for the coming year. Uh, and occasionally we will have a business item beyond that to take up with the membership. Uh, and we might do that this year. Um, but otherwise, and I'll talk about that in a second, but otherwise it's just a party and it's a, it's a, it's a really good time. Everybody has a blast. Uh, and, uh, so I encourage you to break out a recipe for a vegetable dish or something and, uh, and come, come join us on the, um, uh, uh, 6 PM on the 10th. It's the 10th, right? I didn't get that on here. Uh, sat next Saturday, the, uh, uh, officers for next year are always announced at the November meeting. And this is the November meeting, right? Uh, so Chris Thody, a Thody. Toady, I'm going to get that right. One of these days, Chris Toady. I don't know why I want to say Toady. I want to pronounce that H. So, uh, president, Michael Borelli, vice president, treasurer, Jim Dixon, secretary, me, and we need to start thinking about finding a replacement for me, uh, board members, Carl, Frialda Hoven, Darcy Howard, Danny Flippo, John Reed, Ed Swain, Ken McLeod, McLeod. Now, the way we do this, that's, that's the, the nominees from the nomination committee at the actual event, we'll open the floor for any additional nominations. And if there are additional nominations, well, we'll have a, we'll have a campaign and, uh, and an election, uh, uh, and we will contest the results. <laughs> we've never, we've never had a contested election that I don't, I don't think ever. So, and we will announce it, the, the award, the, the nominees of the, for the awards, uh, the nominees this year for the service award, Danny Flippo, Michael Borelli, John Reed, Sean Hartley, Chris Toady, Jim Dixon, myself, and Michael Hewitt, the outreach, uh, award nominees, Michael Borelli. Michael's in every one of these, Daryl Heath, Carl Frialdehoven, and Darcy Howard observing Michael Borelli, Doug Wilson, John Reed, Bo Edwards, Ryan, Papa, Carol, 
Uh, and so those will be announced. They have been determined. Uh, they will be announced at the party. And, uh, uh, and uh, before I go to this last item, let me uh, say that we might take up two issues of business, or then we might not. We might just push it off to the board to deal with. But uh, uh, we'll see what people think about whether they want to take these up. But uh, two things. One, some years ago, I talked us into changing our monthly meeting system from the second Saturday each month to uh, one where about every, it works out to about every year, uh, we change the date in order that we meet up here on dark nights. Uh, uh, the question has been raised as to whether that's been worth the confusion and the trouble. Uh, and so we need to take that issue up. We may just go back to the second Saturday. Uh, what brought it to the surface was this meeting right here. Uh, the uh, idea was is that uh, the way it, the way it worked out, the meeting using our normal system would have fallen on the Thanksgiving weekend, and the people thought, eh, that's not good. We won't have a meeting. Then nobody will show up." Uh, so we moved it. We bumped it to this week. Um, and then Chris lastly said he has trouble keeping up with when the meeting is. And so maybe we just need to revisit that, go back to the old second Saturday of each month, uh, and not change it anymore. The second issue that, uh, that I, that we need to deal with, I think, um, uh, deals with the award process. Again, I'm the culprit. Uh, we used to have, take the nominations from the membership. And then the membership would vote on it. Uh, and I was of the view that, that, um, uh, that the board really ought to uh, vote on these because they have a better insight. It was my rationale, a better insight, uh, into who's gotten it in the past and who's really done the work and so forth and so on. But I think it was a mistake. <laughs> I think we need to go back to having a membership vote on it myself. So at any rate, we need to take those two issues up. Maybe we'll take them up then. Maybe we'll bump it off and let the board deal with it later. But we really only have one membership meeting a year. We want the membership to chime in on this. This is the time to do it. Final thing. It's a good thing I'm the only speaker tonight. Uh, the miserable Mid-States Region of the Astronomical League. Everybody that's a member of CAS is also a member of the Astronomical League. You should get the reflector in the mail. Um, uh, and uh, the uh, region has a annual convention in June each year. And it is a lot of fun. People ought to consider more of our members ought to go. Some years we'll have five, six, seven people go. In other years, there'll be one or two of us. It's a lot of fun. They have great programming for a day and a half, uh, wonderful talks, typically, uh, a banquet, uh, an uh, observer of the year award and, um, and lunches. And it's just, it's, it, you, you rubbing elbows with, uh, with fellow amateur astronomers. And it's a great opportunity to make new friends and learn new things. And, um, uh, and, and pick up inspiration. It's just, it's just really a hoot. Uh, uh, typically, um, uh, the Kansas city club and the St. Louis club do more their, their share of hosting these events. Cass last hosted it some, I don't know, probably six, seven years ago now. Um, but, uh, our turn will be coming around here before long, but where I'm really going with this is, uh, <laughs> the region has not been very active other than having that convention. That's really all it did. And back about 2011, it looks like, uh, some history has been looked, uh, uh, investigative history has been conducted to find out when it happened. We they quit electing a regional chair. Uh, and they just abandoned that office in effect. Uh, and, uh, 
uh, it's a long story. I'm not going to tell it, but the bottom line is uh, there's been a big effort to review the uh, region's bylaws. The national has been reviewing its own bylaws for that matter. Uh, and uh, the current uh, acting chair, because she's not really the chair, the current acting chair has spent the last year and a half uh, uh, trying to get the uh, et getting the bylaws edited and the concept going forward is, is we're going to start electing a full slate of officers and try to have the region uh, function other than just the convention, primarily by trying to help smaller clubs uh, get talks and also maybe uh, 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 have some kind of region-wide programming as well, but besides the convention. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's a report from the region and the last thing on my agenda, I think, tonight. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else got it, but this morning I got delivered the reflector in an email with a PDF attached. Did everyone else get that? Yeah. So does that mean they're not sending out the uh, hard copy anymore? I don't know. What was um, the question? Yeah, question. Somebody got a question? No, they were. What was the question about the reflector? Jim, so somebody what they were just asking was if everybody had received uh, the email this morning. Uh, with the reflector and the uh, additional PDF attachment that came with it. And are they going to be sending it out no more as a hard print or is it just going to be strictly digital? Oh, I did not get that. And uh, I don't know the answer. Was that it, Jim? I don't know the answer, and I did not get that email. We got plenty of people that offered to forward it to you, sir. Okay. And one last thing that I, I wanted to bring up, if y'all haven't checked your email, uh, Jim, who was just speaking a second ago, uh, sent out the, uh, the wonderful email that we get at the end of the year that says it's renewal time. And uh, so uh, get ready to enter your PayPal's or however you want to do it uh, and get you set up for this next year. And uh, it looks like we're going to have a great next year and we look forward to it. We got a lot of events that are going to be coming up and uh, it looks like the, the group is continuing to grow. So uh, was there any other questions or anything? Well, now that we got plenty of crickets in here, um, uh, it was brought up about we need to, uh, if you can volunteer or work at a star party, um, please get with one of us or at least a board member or someone, and we will uh, get you set up and hopefully get directions and everything for you. That was my fault this last one. Uh, I got lost in the park. Who would have guessed, you know, but, uh, either, either way, um, uh, if there's no other questions, uh, I guess. If nobody heard that a second ago, Michael Borelli is our telescope chair membership chair and uh and 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 he runs the the telescope lynn program so uh any active members uh can borrow uh telescopes that we have and i think we have quite a few of them at this point we have six to choose from and so uh if you can't get a hold of michael borelli get a hold of one of us and we'll be happy to to get you his name and number 
and we can go from there. Anything else, folks? Yes. No, we didn't. So if you're a board member, look out for an emergency uh, board meeting coming up. You'll probably receive at least one or 20 emails on it and uh, with the Zoom link. And hopefully we'll have all that hammered out before the December meeting next week. All right, folks, uh, once again, thank you all for coming out here. Uh, if you're new here, uh, grab a hold of somebody and ask them to uh, show you around right after the, this meeting right now. And uh, look forward to seeing you all next month, or at least at the Christmas party, and then also next month at next month's uh, meeting. And uh, if you need to be checked off on different things, uh, like I said, reach out to to anybody that's already an active member and uh we can try and get you all set up appreciate y'all coming out and uh y'all have a happy holidays if i don't see any of y'all